Before I get on to Julia's story and, and Tibbs, on the phone with us right now is the comedian, the comedian Pat Cooper. You know, he's a guy that makes people laugh and has for many years. And lots of his jokes do focus on the family. Now, Pat, as you know, your son Michael is here in our studio. He says that you abandoned him and the other kids, and he is, as you can imagine, angry, bitter. I'll let him tell you how he feels, but how do you feel about this? I don't abandon no one. That's not true. How do you abandon someone uh, if you're there all the time, you're in the neighborhood, you, uh, you, you were taken to family court, and uh, your name is on a docket, and the checks have to come in every week, and if they don't, they come and get you. How do you abandon? That, 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 that's such a But, Pat, have you been a father to Michael? No. Isn't no. that abandonment? No. No, because you weren't allowed to be a father to him. You see, you got to be a father on the conditions of his mother, which I refused. But it's not his fault, the yes, conditions his of his mom, is it? Let me explain to you why. Because years later, when you're an adult, you can come over and say, wait a minute, you got a right to defend yourself. But they don't give you the right to defend yourself. What they do is, they say, you're wrong, shut up, you're not, you're abandoned. I abandoned nobody. All I did was pay and do what I had to do, and I went by the law that they wanted me to go by. They chose that life, not me. Okay, Pat, hold on a second. Michael, what's your view on that? Uh, my father's uh, whole act is based on his family. Um, he portrays the image that he's close to me, both mentally and emotionally. I'm not speaking to you, Mike. The truth oh, hold on, about, I'm speaking to him now, about, Pat. Excuse me. But I'm not the truth about my about father him. is that he's never been there as a father, nor has he represented any kind of role model to yeah. me in the past 30 years. Pat Cooper's image isn't a lie that he sold to the American public by turning his back on his own flesh and blood. And that's the true story about him that's been going on for 30 years in my mind. I Pat, have tried many times to get close okay, to Okay, hold on, Michael. Let's, see, let's hear from Pat. Yeah. Pat, you heard that. You yeah, heard the sounds of a very, very hurt young man. No, he's not hurt. He's hurt on... You see, let me tell you something. It's very simple to go on the television and say, my father did this, my father did that. Let me tell you something. I'm a gentleman. I've always been a gentleman. Now, if you want to depict me, first of all, whatever I do in my act, it's not them. I'm not talking about them. I wrote material. I wrote material. So in order to make it look easier, rather than say that my neighbor's son, I said my son. Or rather than say my neighbor's daughter, I said my daughter. The irony of the whole thing is they had one time asked me that they wanted to get paid that I mentioned their name. What kind of nonsense is this? What are these people kidding me or what? They ought to be ashamed of themselves to say I deserted. I deserted nobody. When you desert, you hide somewhere. I'm in the public eye. My face was always there. And whenever I talked about my family and I got records to prove it, you know, recordings, I always talked well about them. I never talked down if you want to say, yeah, I was talking about them. But were you I there when Michael wanted to me. play in Little League ball, Pat, or when he was in, had troubles in school, or when he had questions for you? Let me explain something. Go ahead. There's no Little League ball. Them games are over. That's the all-Americanic con job. I'm talking about realism here, Geraldo. I'm talking about the truth. That young man there is 32 years old. Right. All of a sudden, he comes out of a hole and wants, yeah. a, he wants a father. Where was he when his father was all alone and nobody came around? Mm -hmm. Where his father had to pay the bills? Where his father had to turn around? Where his right. aunts jumped me on the street want to beat the daylights out of me? That's the kind of family right. I want to uh, be. Hold on, Pat. Let you Michael have a chance. Go ahead, Michael. That's my father's way of trying to justify for not being around for I the last 30 years. I don't to you nothing, He tried to justify for not being around. But how was I supposed to go see him when I was seven and eight years old? Now, hold on a minute. Then he moved to Las Vegas, and many times I tried to reach him by sending birthday cards, Father's yeah. Day cards. And you know what he said to me? I never got them. So maybe somebody in his household ripped them up. No, so I had to send return nothing. receipts so I knew that my father got the Father's Day cards to say, Dad, I'm trying to reach out to you. Then he said he couldn't call me up because he had a confrontation with my, my mother on the telephone. So I put my own telephone in my room and my own telephone number. Still he never called. I lived on my own since I'm 19 years old. He never called my house. How are you? I said, Dad, come over and see my apartment. Ah, what's there to see in an apartment? All apartments are alike. Never once made an effort, once made one effort to come over and say, how are you, son? I'm proud of you. I'm proud you're on your own. No, he always used my mother as an excuse why he couldn't reach me. But he was a man. I was alone on my own. Where was he? Where was my father for the last 30 years? I was well, I was, people to believe that he's been around. See, I don't mind him talking about us in his act. There's no problem with that. I'm not saying that he's talking literally about me. But he's portraying an image to the public that he's there for us. And he's a fake. He lied for 30 years that he's been a good father when he's a complete lie. I never claimed that was a good that father. Hello? I just want people to know that. Hello? That's what I want. Go ahead, Pat. I never claimed that was a good father. 
I never claimed I was he a good father. He just said in the last three minutes you were a good father. He just said in the last three minutes you were a good father. Let me tell you something, Araldo. Good. Let me tell you something. You can't let these people dictate to you because they'll devour you. They lie through their teeth to devour you. <laughs> I'm in the public eye. I'll stand in front of him or his mother or his aunts and uncles any day, any time. They're a bunch of frauds. <laughs> and I'll tell you right now, they're a bunch of frauds. And I got news to you. You're I talking about your own flesh and blood, right? I would have worried, though. I would have never come on the air. I would have went into hiding. Meanwhile, I told years. your producer, any time, any time this. I can come on, I'll be there. Because they ain't got the guts. They ain't got the guts. The guts is I'm right all here I want to know truth. is beat up, beat up the man when he's down. The minute I yeah. became somebody, all of a sudden they said, oh, look, I'm your son. Somebody. Where were they Still when I needed anybody. them? Still not Where were they when I needed them? I was an eight dollar a week room. Where were they? They're a bunch of con artists. Still not anybody, Dad. And let me tell you something. I don't have to be your father. You're not that thrilling. You're, You're not just... that thrilling. And I don't want to be your father. Right, I, I, I don't right, Pat, be Pat, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sign. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. Pat, enough, enough. You're upsetting me even. Enough. Hold it, hold it. That's enough. That's enough. I hope that you two can continue a dialogue. Start something. There's no. Put the bygones. The game is over. Thank you. The game is over. Thank you. Good. Don't thank me, my friend. And remember, you went on Geraldo, never told me you worked for him, so you're a liar right there. All of a sudden, I had an answer to my father you know, where I was born. Oh, one thing, I want to make a... Sudden, you know how we discovered that Michael Caputo was the son of Pat that. Cooper? Hey, let me tell you let something. Let me... Hold on, hold on. The, Do me a favor. Uh, Pat Cooper was on the Howard Stern radio show. It's right. a it's a talk radio show right. on in the mornings here in New York, Philadelphia, and Washington. And he was talking about his act, and suddenly, spontaneously, the children of Pat Cooper started calling in, no, and no, the dialogue not was not unlike that that you have been witness to here today. That's not true. One of the kids we realized is none other than Michael Caputo, who is none other than someone who is an intern on our staff. When I said at the top of this program that this was an issue that directly affected hundreds of thousands of American youngsters, they're all over. They're in this town, they're on your staff, your family, your neighbors. This is a very relevant and significant issue as we go into the 90s and 50% of marriages are ending in divorces, more and more of these paternity suits are being filed. And the bottom line is, what happens? What happens to the Michael Caputo?